We can head and write the mic works. So of course uh, we all know the story Yiddish or English. Yeah, Yiddish is Yiddish is fun, you know. Yiddish is gishmak. Yiddish is gishfart gishmak. I did it bar pack. It was very good. <laughs> Everybody knows the Pasha of Chayelo. The Pasha of Chayelo is that in Tovshin Gimel, 1943, the Friedrich was in America a little more than three years. So there's a Fabreng. I don't know exactly how the Tzir of the Fabrengen was. Lechere was in 770, upstairs. And the Friedrich Rebbe revealed that 50 years before Chayel Tofresh Nun Gimel, which is 1893, it was the Chayel of his Bar Mitzvah. He turned Bar Mitzvah two months before. So at that point, I think, I think, the Friedrich Rebbe was already learning with his Madrich, the Rashbats. Right, I mean, Melamdim is time I know this. That the Friedrich Rebbe had three Melamdim. And he describes each one of them and their strengths and weaknesses. The Friedrich Rebbe leaves nothing to the imagination. I, I forget, after he tells you everything that the imagination first has elicited, the first Malam the gate of Nebuchadnezzar. He was a Dardiki Malamad. This is a long time ago. A Dardiki Malamad meant Poshet Kipshute. He taught you how to read Hebrew. Washington Guide, did you sitting here? No, no, no. He Poshet taught you how to read Hebrew. Um, he taught you olive base, he taught you Nakudis, taught you Siddur, could be a little Chumish. But you stayed by the Dadiki Malamed until you learned how to read. And then you moved on. In other words, the Dadiki Malamed, it wasn't like today, you have a class. You stayed by the Dadiki Malamed until you learned Ivrit. After you learned Ivrit, you went to a second Malamed. The second Malamed that the Friedrich Rebbe had, his name was Abshimshin. Friedrich Rebbe says, I've been a good Malamed, I'm a Zera Strenger. He was a very good teacher, but he was so strict. When they forget patch, Rabbi Shimon forget patch, and the Friedrich Rebbe said that he used to say, "Bamir zaynetokem yuchasim." There's no favorites by me. So the Friedrich Rebbe said when he wanted to make sure that the kids would take him seriously, he would hit me, because <laughs> the Rebbe said if he was able to hit me and I was the Rebbe's son, he could hit them for sure. He learned by Rabbi Shimon for three years. He was a good malamid. He said he taught well. I'm going to strengthen it. The third Malam the Friedrich Rebbe was Reb Nissen, Reb Nissen Skablo. The Mishpacha now made about him a little safe. There's a there's Zalman Skablo, I think it's the uncle of his. Reb Nissen Skablo was a Emes of Siddi Shayid. And the Friedrich Rebbe took a lot from him. Uh, he was by Reb Nissen a few years. Reb Nissen Skablo had a, a kanchik, had a belt on the wall. And the worst punishment that you could possibly get in his class, that he would point at the belt. The belt never came off the wall. If you're like really out of control, he would point at the belt, and that was, that was more oinish than anything else. And what the Friedrich Rebbe said about Reb Nissen was that he would tell stories. And when Reb Nissen would tell stories, the kids would sit on the edge of their seat. And the whole success of the Malamdus was that the children knew that if they're going to behave, he's going to, the Malamdus is going to tell them a story, whether a story from the Gemara or a story from Chsidim. So I don't know when... Reb Nissen stopped being the Rebbe Rayatis Malamed. When he was 11, he was still learning by Reb Nissen Skablo, because there's a story about that, about that hoof of his life. But before Bar Mitzvah, before Bar Mitzvah, he went out of the Cheder, and his father got him a private tutor. His tutor was Rashbats. You, you know who Rashbats is. He, the first Hatomim has the story of the Rashbats. It's translated into English. Rashbats was, was a very, very big god. He was a very, very big Talmud Chok, a very big god, and a very, very big Chosset. I heard from Reb Mendel, I didn't hear from him live, I saw it on a video, that somebody once asked the Friedrich Rebbe if there's an Indian to go to the Kvorim of Chassidim. So the Friedrich Rebbe said, Achosid Azevi Rashbat Yo. In other Rashbat was a special Yid, a very unusual man. 
Rabbi Solneach, there's a book called the Solneach Agodol about Rabbi Solneach, Blinitsky. Solneach has a story, it's a Maise Pile Ploim. It's Bemis a Maise Pile Ploim. The Rashbats passed away in Tafresh Samachay in 1905. So the first few years of Taim Chatmimim, he was the Mashpia. The first Mashpia was Rebbe Hendel. Rebbe Hendel lasted Mamish a few months. They started the yeshiva summer at Eishnan Zayin. If I'm not mistaken, the winter of Nunches, or maybe, maybe Tafresh Samach. He was not, it didn't last very long, Rebbe Hendel. Rebbe Hendel was a, a Moedin de Ko'ovid. But Rashbats was a Mashpia for seven years. And the early Tmimim, I mean, Abshmuel, Abshmuel not only remembered the Rashbats, I, I don't remember the Abshmuel, but when you read about the Abshmuel, Abshmuel was full of Misholim and stories and Werther. The Rashbats, he was very He was very imaginative. And he used the world as a marshal for Taita. He wasn't, he was a big person. So Rabbi Salneach had the Tzelta Maise, Rabbi Salneach Lenitsky was from the first Tmimim, told a story that the Rashbats walked, walked into the Zal, with a shvere marsho. A marsho was bothering him. A shvere marsho was bothering him. If a marsho was bothering him, the marsho was a problem. A bem is a problem. So the Rashbat said, does anybody can help me with the marsho? So Bishol Neach said, he'll try to help him with the marsho. So they sat down with the marsho, and Bishol Neach helped him with the marsho. The Rashbat was so excited that he understood the marsho correctly. He said, you gave me a matana, I'm going to give you a matana. And he told him an amazing story that when the Rebbe Metzim Chetzedek was ill, So he was sent, I don't know if it's Samach Tzedek himself, by the children of Mitapidian to Baal Shem Tev in Mezhbush. Bavach in Mezhbush is very far apart. The Rashbats Baklal didn't have an easy life. There's a story about that also. Um, he was poor. He was a mecha svarim, so he sold svarim. <laughs> Later on, he was the personal madrich, the personal madrich of the Rebbe Rashab, the Fidik Rebbe's father. And then when the Fidik Rebbe came of age, the Rebbe Rashab hired him to be the personal madrich of the Fidik. Imagine a Yid who was the madrich of two of the Nesiyah Chabad. What kind of Yid this was. So he was told to go to Mezhbush, to Meshatech al Kevin Rabbah Shemtev, and to leave a pidyan. And he was, he was a Mechah Svarim, so on the way he stopped to sell Svarim. He came to Mezhbush Chalamid Pesach. So Mosadik was in Stalagad of Pesach. Anyway, he came back to Lubavitch. And when they heard what happened, the uh, Samachetic sons, they were very upset with him. And uh, I guess different people different, had different reactions. Could you imagine? He sent you the Rebbe, the Tat of Nish Gezund, when he tells Chapshan Swan. I guess he just couldn't imagine that Zaina in Yevon Estalkas. But he felt very bad. So he went back to Mezhbush. And he told the Bishon Neach, I stayed by the Baal Shem Tev until I saw the Baal Shem Tev Bohokets. He saw the Baal Shem Tev uh, Bohokets awake. This was, he saw the Baal Shem Tev, uh, what kind of Gashmias he saw, but he wasn't in a dream. He saw the, he was standing by the scene of the Baal Shem Tev, and he saw the Baal Shem Tev, the Pashtas. So you can understand, very to give the Rashbat. He was hired by the Reb Nishma Satan to be defeated Kebbe's tutor. And if you know the stories, they, they, it was 24 hours. They, they were roommates. The Hadroche involved Hamapil and Kishmashalamite and Meidani and Negovasar the whole time. For a few years, um, at one point the Rebbe Rashab said, he told the Rebbe since the Nesare, I have machel given as mitzayin chinuch to afzachalein opgeben. The Rebbe Rashab said, "His Rebbe, I made the decision that his chinuch I have to do myself." The Rashbats was still the the official tutor, but the Rebbe Rashab spent a lot of time with the Friedrich Rebbe. Anyway, so there were occasions where the Rebbe Rashab would call the Friedrich Rebbe away from the Malamed. And it was done. It was done respectfully, and it was done. On, it was done honestly. It wasn't a game. The Rebbe would send a shliach to the Malamit, to the Rashbats and say that the Rebbe is calling his son the Friedrich Rebbe. And um, I, I'm assuming that on most occasions the Rebbe gave him a heads up. He told him before that he's going to send the Mishodas, and uh, and he had to get permission. And the Friedrich Rebbe says there were occasions where the Rashbats said no. The, the shliach came to the Tata Ruf, and he said, "Not now. We're busy. Not now." I think it was 4 o'clock in the afternoon. I mean, I haven't seen the story in a very, very long time. So, and I don't trust my memory anymore. I used to, but I don't trust them anymore. Um, the shliach came, a Meshoras came, with a, with a message that the Rebbe is calling him. And the Rashbat had been told before that the Rebbe is going to call him. So he gave him the shoes, he left the cheder. The it was the only was a bismet, but two of them doing it together. And he went to his father. And the Fidu says that his father had a cheder left him a cheder. 
In other words, there were two rooms with only one entrance. So if you locked both doors, you were private twice, you know, like a chaysem et And they went into the first room, they locked the door. They went to the second, they locked the door. And they had prepared their big day Shabbos. And the Rebbe Rashab said to the Friedrich Rebbe, Gut yom tov uns. Heint is the yem eledes from the shnei ameres agdel. Gut yom tov uns. I say uns. To us. Today is the birthday of the shnei ameres agdel. And the Rebbe Rashab was magala to the Friedrich Rebbe, the union of, uh, of Yud Chayel, of Yud Chayel. This was the union which was given over me, Rebbe Le Rebbe. And Pochach Sidim did not know about it. Chassidim and Lubavish did not know the birthday of the Baal Shem Tev. They did not know the birthday of the Alter Rebbe. They also did not know the years. They didn't know. The Beis Rebbe says that the Alter Rebbe was born in Tovkuf Zayin, not in Tovkuf Hei. And the Rebbe Rashab told his son, the Friedrich Rebbe, the Inyan of Chayalo, and he said to him, Zos nit megalaz ein biz as man mesuyim. You shouldn't reveal to as man mesuyim. How do you translate the word mesuyim? A fixed time, a significant time. So 50 years later, the 50th anniversary, the Rebbe, the Friedrich Rebbe spoke of Sikhe, and the, the Rebbe Rayas would write, would speak Bekitzer, and he would write Bariches. That was his style. He spoke very short, but he wrote very long. Even when he was healthy, even when the Friedrich Rebbe didn't have a problem with speech, he was a Makatze Bedibure. The Rebbe was a Makatze Bekshove and a Meirech Bedibure, but the Friedrich Rebbe was Faket, as Eberget. So when they, they gave him the Hanukkah, the Friedrich Rebbe sat down and wrote the whole Sikh up. It's a hundred pages. Chayel Tovshin Gimel came out as a Kuntris. The Rebbe, our Rebbe, prepared it. And it came out as a Kuntris with Niyaz Mechai. Now it's printed in the Sefer Nasikh as Tovshin Gimel. But way back when it came out as a Kuntris, Chayel Tovshin Gimel, a lot of Esophis, a lot of interesting things in there. And there's the history of Chayel, the Al Baal Shem Tev, the Alta Rebbe, the Alta Rebbe's father, a lot of the history of Chayel. And until then, Poshet, the Welt hat nicht gewusst, nobody knew what Nifan Chayel. So this is, in other words, Chayel, the Shach is to America. In America, the Friedrich Rebbe's Magala, the Yom Tev of Chayel, this the Yom Tev of Shnei Amir Sakdelem, the Vashem Tev and Alta Rebbe. Um, I, uh, I don't know how much time we have, but I, huh? The Malamdim can stay here again tonight. If it's okay with you, it's good with me. But uh, I, I, I want to, I guess I want to get to the point as quickly as possible because I imagine at least some of you need to sleep. Um, so I push it stories about Chinuch by the Baal Shem Tev, and stories about Chinuch when I get to Mount Nereb. This is a, a kinesis, this is a fabrengen a malamdim. So we should tell stories about Chinuch. First, when I get about Shem Tev, uh, of course, the first story is that when the Baal Shem Tev was five years old, his father passed away. This is, these are not unknown stories, but nevertheless, his father passed away. Before the father passed away, his father called him to his bedside, and he told him, that's how it's brought down in the Svarim. He said to him, Yisraelik, there's also the Shmei Rav, but Kein Zach, Nor Far Nebish Nalein, Right, in English. Yisraelik, you should fear nothing except for the Ebesh himself. And you should love every Jew with all the depth of your soul. So the Rebbe Rayat, the Fidik Rebbe has a Sikhe where he tells this word. And he adds that in this word you have the whole Chassidus. When the Fidik Rebbe, was five, his father told him two things. Hashem and the whole chsidis. In other words, the Baal Shem Tev's father gave him the whole chsidis in, in, a, in, a, in a capsule as a five year old to fear nothing except for the Abish himself, that's even Achtos Hashem, and to love every Jew with the Gantz of Tif, and the and Abish Yisrael. Now, of course, the Baal Shem Tev's life is very, it's, 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 stra- it's enigmatic, it's, we don't know everything about it, but we know a lot. But one of the, <laughs> the Baal Shem Tev was a Nister. Was a nister. And uh, the Baal Shem Tev married a woman, a girl, from a mishpach, a meid chashuva, her father, her father, there's a, the Baal Shem Tev Shver was the Rav of Brod, I believe. Of Brod, the case of Befrayim, of Befrayim of Brod. And uh, the way the story played out was that the Befrayim of Brod met the Baal Shem Tev unterwegs, traveling. The Baal Shem Tev revealed himself, the Baal Shem Tev was a nister. 
and he made a, he, he asked the Bashem to marry his daughter. And Bashem said, Tatnai, I'm a machti at Tnoim. They make the Tatnoim then. We make Tnoim by the Chasane, I'm both like Machin Tnoim Friya. And Tnoim, you should know. <laughs> Battle 11 has a safe in Tnoim. If you want to read about it, Tnoim was not a joke. Because people used to break Tnoim. So there was, in, in, in the old Tnoim, there was a there was a shvua and a klole if you broke the Tnoim. Tnoim was a serious geshaft. They used to say it's better to get married and get divorced than to break the Tnoim. Tnoim was, a, they, over time, they, they, they softened the Tnoim. Lamosh, our Rebbe's Tnoim were made vov kislev. That means eight days before, six days before the chasnes, eight days before the chasnes. But the mold, they made the Tnoim when they got engaged. And you couldn't break the Tnoim. And there were two, two pages. One, the, the Davia Kala took, and the other one was taken by this guy, you saw Rebbe Yezif from Tlust. Anyway, he passes away. The Befraim of Rod passes away. In Unterwegen, he didn't get home yet. And they find by him a star that he was Meshadach, his daughter, to Yisrael Yezir. Yisrael Yezir, go find Yisrael Yezir. So it's not a shalaf and Igun, but you don't mess around with the Noim. Anyway, he shows up. Come to fun. A prosterid, mamish, a a yid v'feish ketzura salaf. He's dressed and he looks and he's acting like a Mamish like a, you know, almost like you have in David HaMelech when he went to Avi Melech, he was drooling at the mouth. Mamish, in ganz nicht kamensch. And he's a Salba Yezir. And he has the matching contract. You understand? There were two Shtarim, he had the other one. <laughs> she had a brother whose name was Abgesh and Kitavet. You've heard the name Abgesh and Kitavet. And he said, there's a mistake. Something happened over here. Epis nicht. This is impossible. There's no way my father, the Shadach, you did this. Anyway, the Baal got her alone, and to her the Baal Shem Tev talked straight, and the Baal Shem Tev said, but your brother has to think. That I'm alone. And they got married, and it was so hard that at a certain point the Epashat moved. He was so embarrassed, the Geshe Kittifa was so embarrassed that his daughter, the Tatik Machta Shidduch, in his wildest dreams he couldn't imagine why, but they didn't want to break the father's Shidduch, and he had a little terrible Agmas Nefesh. Of course later the Baal Shem Tev revealed himself to him, there's a lot of Pratim, when the Bashem Tev had to be in his gale, in Tov Kav Tov Tzadik Dalet, Chayelo, Chayelo, the Friedrich Rebbe says, I'm sorry, I'm digressing. The Friedrich Rebbe says that Chayelo is the Yemlet, is the Bashem Tev, Begufei, Benafshei, Ubenishmasei. Begufei means he was born Chayelo, in Shnas Nachas, 1698. Benafshei, on his 26th birthday, Chayelo, Tov Pei Dalet, he met his Rebbe, Achia Ashilaini, Moedi Virabi Baal Achai, and 10 years later, Chai El Tov Tzadik Dalet, on the Baal Shem Tev's 36th birthday, the Baal Shem Tev revealed himself. So Chai El was going to the Baal Shem Tev from Malah Zaytan. So the Baal Shem Tev wrote a letter to the Gezh and Kitev, to the same Shvogel who couldn't stomach that his sister was married to Namaritz. When the Baal Shem Tev had to be in his gal, the Baal Shem Tev said like this. Therefore, it's, the print is, the print is not from the Gneza. Mitzvink me min ha-shamayim, as on this gal, I'm being forced min, min himmel. He says, Malmaila. He asks his shrug to come and stand with me. Rosham Tev asked him, Gashin Kitev, and Pratav was taking on the world. A Yid who yesterday was a, a prostitute, now he's going to open up, open a derech of Chsidis. The Rosham Tev understood how much his nagdis was done. He asked his shrug, Rab Gashin Kitev, push it, stand next to him. He'll have a little credibility. Rab Gashin Kitev, and he can't learn anything. And that's what he did. Anyway. So there's a letter from Hashem Tev from Tov Peites in the Hatomim. It's so interesting. He writes to his brother-in-law in Yiddish, and it's a broken Yiddish. It's Rachman. It's Yiddish. It's Ka Yiddish. I can't nisht. I weiß, at the host faribul to be svardrosen. I know that you're upset or that you're disappointed that I'm such a big amaretz. I'm not quoting the letter verbatim, but what am I supposed to do? I was a yosem, which was true. <laughs> and my parents passed when I was little. But I'm telling you, I'm going to try to learn something. I hired myself out as a behelfer. Behelfer is missing all the vowels. Bamalamid. And I'm going to take the kids to and from school. And the Ravila, when they're learning Allah Bays, I'll learn Allah Bays with them. Atka de kach. It's a behelfer. Bamalamid. He says to his brother, I'll, I'll learn also how to read Lashon Kodesh. I'll learn how to read Siddur. This is a, the letter is printed. You can see it. Anyway, but the Baal Shemta was a behelfer. Obama Lamid. I think it's Evan Ayam Yim, right? That the Zitcha Magid said that he wishes upon himself that he should kiss a safe tater. 
with the same Ava that the Basham Tev kissed the children, they would take to and from Cheder. And when he was a Behelfer with the Malamed, he would, he would learn with the children, taking them back and forth. He would teach them, say, Brachas. He would talk to them about Shmir Saloshan, about Nivel Peh. He was, he was Machanach the children. He himself acted as, a, as an assistant Malamed. And he used the opportunity to, be, to, to the, the children that he had in his disposal. He was basically the bus driver, you understand? And the children who he bussed around, he, uh, he gave them chinuch and adroch. It's a story about Shem Tev. And chinuch, Baal Shem Tev himself, they teach them, the spirit, the chayas of Yiddishkeit. Now, when he gets him out in the Rebbe, what do you have a story about the Rebbe in chinuch? So the Al-Rebbe, his own chinuch is a very interesting story. Um, but there is one story that I'm going to share. I'll share two stories, Estes. And again, I'm not saying stories because you don't know them. I'm sitting here in an informed audience, which is very difficult. <laughs> but okay, as long as you're quiet, I'll keep talking. Um, the, one, the story that you all know, the Rebbe is Magali in Tavshin Chof. I think that was Magal the Maise. For Rosh Hashanah, Tavshin Chof, Kel Nar It's an unbelievable story. Right? And it came out in this forum that they printed at that time. The Rebbe sent it out as a letter for Rosh Hashanah, I think. The famous story with the altar. It's famous because the Rebbe made it famous. That the altar Rebbe and the middle Rebbe, that they lived in the same house. That the altar Rebbe lived upstairs. And the middle Rebbe lived downstairs. And the middle Rebbe had a lot of children. The middle Rebbe was Matupal Officially, he had nine children. Lepoli had a lot more than nine. I mean, he himself writes that when we're running away from Napoleon, they had a little boy and he died. And he writes, the middle of writes in a letter that they had a son. I think they had even a Shalom Zoch and a Vek Farm He had more, he had many, many children in the middle of Rebbe. But when the middle of Rebbe was concentrated, the middle of was, in a, was learning, he was not in this world. His hamoka was extraordinary. His concentration was not normal. So the story that the Rebbe told her, that the middle of Rebbe was sitting and learning, and one of his children fell out of the crib or the bed. A baby, a young child. And the baby was crying. And the middle Rebbe didn't hear it. So the Alter Rebbe, who was also learning upstairs, came down, picked up the little baby, and as the Rebbe said, Farvikt. Farvikt means he cradled it, and he quieted it. He put the baby back into the vigile, put it back to sleep. When the Nachat Reuzgir and the middle Rebbe, then later of that night or the next day, he, he said to the middle Rebbe, how could it be that a Yiddish kid cries and you don't hear? That's the word. A Jewish child is crying and you don't hear. And of course the Rebbe was speaking about the infant Afatze, that we're living in an age where there's millions, Belik Guzma, millions of Kel Nar And if it was true in Tov Shin Chof, how true is it in Tov Shin Pei? It, it's unbelievable. The, you should hear the cry of the child. This was the word, this is the story. But there's one story which is a little bit less famous, I think. And that's the following story. The Alter Rebbe, the Alter Rebbe's father, you should know, with all of his Mishagasen, was a businessman. He, had, he was so from and he had so many Akshanas. I mean, all the Shneir Sanska Akshanas you can trace back to the Barak. You know, with the genes, Alter Rebbe's father was an action like you never saw. Um, but he, when he got married, he allowed his Shver, it was a big toy, he allowed his Shver to give him a farm. And there was a, well, the only thing he took from Mishver was this farm, and after that he had to pay for breakfast. If you ever came to him for breakfast, the Al-Tareb and the Barabodach insisted on paying it. And the Barabodach made, made panosa from fresh fruit, paydas. And it looks like the Al-Tareb's father was Amid, he wasn't poor. It always got out in the Baal Shem Tev. He was in the Tzadik and the Storm by the Baal Shem Tev and so on. A kid said, and the al wife, her name was Rebetz and Stenner, her parents were the richest Jews in the entire state, the whole region. Very, very wealthy people. They had a, a business of wine and beer and alcohol for doidis, for many, many generations. And when they got married, al Rebbe, Kedak Eba Kodesh, took the entire, the 5,000 ruble, you know what it means 5,000 ruble, in Tov Kuf Chof, it's millions of dollars. 5,000 ruble, every penny from the 5,000 ruble, he invested, you know, we're in a pushke, it's <laughs> invested. Bottom line is the, the guilt was gone. One of my that the Rebbe came to the Tzemach Tzedek and told him to invest his nadin in, uh, in, in Tzedakah. The Tzemach Tzedek said he doesn't want. And he lost his money. And Alter Rebbe told him later, Nuzastach, you could have uh, you could have profited. Anyway, a few years after the Chasaneh, there were the Difas. 
the Rebbe became a chosr of the Maggid. And the Shver and Shviger and the Mishpacha were great. And so they They mamish were ready of the Alter Rebbe, Kiyodua. And the Alter Rebbe went back to Lajna. Be'edim of Achei Sekel. His Shver was very rich. He wasn't getting any money from him. His father, but I don't know what the Maim of the Matzah was. The bottom line is the Alter Rebbe came back to Lajna, a pauper, an other man. And that's how he was his whole life. If you're a Schneerson, I'll tell you, I'm which is, if you want to know why you have problems with finances, here's the reason that it's brought down. I saw it in Sipur Chsidim, not Sipur Chsidim from Zevin, Chsidim from Zevin, Chsidim Chsidim, that the Alter Rebbe said, he's going to go to as all of them are in the room. Alter Rebbe said, I wanted to pile a mile, all my grandchildren should be from, and it didn't work. But the boys get piled as they don't have a sign of a light. The Alter Rebbe said, the boys get piled as they don't have a light. Now, I'm going to cash out, I'm going to cash out, I'm going to cash out, I'm going to cash Anyway, he came back to Lozhne. Lozhne was a small shtetl, and it was very poor. Lozhne then had already a rov. And they could not afford, they didn't have enough money for a second position. So, but the Alter Rebbe a kid. Alter was born in Lajna. He was born in Lajna. And expect for a few years he was living in Lubavitch, till his chasan he lived in Lajna. And the truth is, if you add up, the Alter Rebbe lived 68 years, much more than half of those years he lived in Lajna. He's called the Alter Rebbe of Liadi, because those were his last years when he had the most chasidim. But the Rubai of, I can't say Rubai Kakuli, but the Rebbe of his life, more than half of his life, he lived in Lozhna. So the Lozhna said, okay, we'll give you a job as a Magid. I think they paid him four rubles a week, which is Mamish Dachkes. Dachkes. Now there were many local cities in Lozhna who were able to give the Alter Rebbe additional money. But the Alter Rebbe wasn't going to take a handout, forget about it. The Alter Rebbe was not going to take money that he hadn't earned. So it was a Yid, who was a very smart man, or, uh, or a woman. He came to the Alter Rebbe the Eitzah, that he has two children who are learning in Cheder, and they're not doing so well, they need tutoring, need help. With the Alter Rebbe tutor, two little boys. And the Alter Rebbe said, yeah. And he gave the Alter Rebbe three rubles a week. In other words, for the tutoring, it was not Lafayerich. It was much more money than the tutoring was worth. And that's an Alter Rebbe lift. So the, the wife of this man who had given the Alter Rebbe this money, she had an open door by the Alter Rebbe. Many, many years later, Alter Rebbe was very famous. She would knock on the back door, the Rebbe would let her in. They didn't wait in line. Because they had seichel. They found a way to give the Alter Rebbe and the Alter Rebbe was mechanech, pasha taught their children teira. These are stories of the Alter Rebbe and the Baal Shem Tiv. They have to do with chinuch. This is the best I can think of. I'm sure there's better stories. I mean, the life of the Baal Shem Tev, the life of the Alter Rebbe is Kulei Chinuch. But Chinuch and Kleine Kinder, these are the few stories that come to my mind. I think we should say Enigma, but uh, just to finish. The Baal Shem Tev came into, today's Baal Shem Tev is the Baal Shem Tev Neshama came into the world. Like the Lushan that's brought is to teach a new derech in Torah that's based on the principle which is going to prepare the world for the coming of Mashiach. That's the Nusach, right? That the Baal Shem Tov's Neshama came into this world to teach a new derech in Torah based on the principle which is going to prepare the world for the coming of Mashiach. And the Torah is the Tarekat from Ayid. In other words, what's the Chiddush of Chiddush? That Ayid is Machshavtan she Yisrael kod molochol dover afilu lemachshaves ha-toira. That's the word. Chiddush says the pre- most precious thing by the Eibish that is not a, te- not a mitzvah, it's not toira, it's Ayid. And the Baal Shem Tev taught this. And the Baal Shem Tev produced a, gave out a, a derech, the Lashen is the Baal Shem Tev taught what, the Alter Rebbe taught how, Ayid could serve Hashem with the Neshama. That's what Hasidus is. Had a serve Hashem with the Neshama. And in no area, or in almost no area, is this more important than when it comes to the Chinuch of children. The whole union of Chinuch is, you're not just giving them information. You're not just developing their mind. 
You're cultivating the neshama. You're cultivating their tamimus. You're cultivating the avas Hashem. You're cultivating the yiras Hashem. And this is this is all. These are all matanas in the Baal Shem Tov. Shem Tov gave us these gifts. Al Rebbe gave us these gifts that we should understand the need for the ruach, for the neshama of Tere Mitzvahs. And the pshitos and the tmimus and the amuna and the taharo. And uh, this is how we this is how we're gonna get through the saves managolos because of the Mashiach is is with the with the koyach with the oir with the chayes of, of chasidus. Mechaim, 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 mechaim. Look, I didn't get even out of the episode. Bar Shabtiv. Tererai ya ya, tererai ya ya. Okay, 
So you have in the Shur and Besefer Atanya, Rabbi Weinberg, or Shalom, and we know that the Rebbe was Magia, that whole Sefer, um, in the beginning. I mean, this Kama Sipurim, right? And the Taka is connected to Heintike Pasha. Pasha's Kisove, Shnas Peduseinu. Right? The, 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 the Tanya was printed, Yutis Kislev, Chof Kislev, Tovkov Nun Zayin. But the Alter Rebbe would not print the Tanya without Haskomas. So the Haskomas, there's two Haskomas printed in our Tanyas, which we learn in the Shir of Chitas. One is from Reb Zusha Hanepola, and the other is from Reb Leib Hakoyen. They both lived in Hanepola. They both lived in Hanapola. And um, so it says in the Rishime, in the Sefer, it says in the, in the, in the uh, Shurim Sefer Atanya, that, uh, the, that uh, each of the masmen that they tailed, that the Shliach came to Hanapola and he went to the Bleiba Koyin and he gave him a copy, a copy of the manuscript of Tanya. Then he went to Reb Zusha and he gave him a copy of the Tanya, so the way the story goes, they got so excited, each one wanted to show the other one the Sefer. So they ran out of the house in the middle of the night to go, they were Chavedim. And they met in the middle of a bridge, each one holding a copy of the Tanya, and they were able to celebrate. Uh, you read Askomis, he's not Rebbe's Chavedim. 
Tamid ya magit. Yismach Yisrael. The oisius of the Haskomis tell you these were not magzim and these were not people of exaggeration. They, they wrote about the Tanya the way they felt about the Tanya. Each one in his own life. Shnas Biduseinu, Shnas, whatever it is, Tiknu, yo, Tiknu, Tovkov Nanvov. Um, and the Rebbe is Madayik in every single word of the Haskomis. It says in, in the Shemus from Hasidim that the Alter Rebbe said, Yichab Tzvei Yedidei Nefesh. Tzvei Yedidei Nefesh. Two people that I love, Tilma Etzma Nefesh. Lebzusha Hane Pole and Lebleib Koyen. The, the, the people gave the Haskom and the Tanya. It's known, it's brought in, in, in Chitrix Maises and it could be other places also, that there was a third Haskom and the Tanya by a Tzadik Nistin who lived in Leipzig, he was the janitor in the theater in Leipzig, his name was Karl, Karl. The, the Baal Shem Ted, Alter Rebbe sent a copy of the Tanya to him. But the two printed Askoma, after the Leib Koyd, and Abdusha Hanabal. So it's brought down, huh? He has a Sefer called Eragonus. It's the Talmud of the Magid. There's two Svarim Eragonus, I, I, I really don't know. But there's a Sefer Eragonus, which is actually a beer on Tanya. In the times of the Alter Rebbe, the same person who was Mechaber, the Bagid of the Yankiv, the Magid Svarim, wrote a Pirush on Tanya, a Mechanus Koifen. It's also, I think it's called Eiragonus. But the Bleib Koin has a safe called Eiragonus. Eiragonus, I, I don't know, off the top of my base. He's known, he's known in the world. Yeah, sure, he's from Tamidia Magid, but there's no Geshe, there's no Hemshech, there's no Shalshelis. The Bishop Halle Paul doesn't need to have a real Shalshelis. His son, Hithneb, Bitte Gehesen, who? What was his name? The son of Bishop Halle Paul? What was their father's name? Ah, uh, Eliezer Lipe. So the Zusha had a son, the Zusha had a son named Eliezer Lipe. Man, he was Malam Akoyme, but that was the whole the Geje. There's no Hemshech. There was no Shalshalas. But the word that's, that I want to share is that the Zusha Hanapoli saw the Tanya. And the Zusha Hanapoli said, this is over 200 years ago. It's a long time ago. It's over 220 years ago by now. At the Sefer Atanya, it does the Kteris, Same Marpe, Fa'ale Magefis von Ikfis de Meshich. Again, I don't know Oisius Bediok, but this is the Toichen Advarim that the Vizusha Paul said about the Tanya that it's the Kteris. It's the Kteris, which is a potion of healing. It's the, it's the, it's the Same Marpe, it's the potion that heals for all the diseases, for all the sicknesses of Ikfis de Meshich. Abzusha said, Bisha Batatanya. This haste that I mean and, and, and if you if you if you sort of speak speak in a mitisad vod. Yeah, we all know the word, the Rebbe speaks about it in so many sikhs. That if the data is already showing him, right from the Rebbe Shah Satan, which is printed now, Im Taylor Sakasidis Emis Lomal in his gal sabbatar is already showing him. Why is it that we were given Eichsidus, Tehras Achsidus, which is called Yechida? It's higher than Kabbalah, it's Yechida. Yechida. And the Eidus HaRishenim did not have it. And like the Rebbe says always, Ach Shedora Betmiya, we're not more worthy than our ancestors. So we all know the Tehras, we all know the Tehras to this Kashe. The Tehras to this Kashe is the Sipur with the Pinchas Koritzer and Alter Rebbe. And I'll tell you the story, not because you don't know it, because I'm telling the story. <laughs> That the Pinchas Karatzev visited the Baal Shemtev. But he didn't visit the Baal Shemtev as a Talmud. He was a Chavad of it. He was a Talmud of, I'm sorry. The Pinchas Karatzev visited the Mizitra Magid. He didn't visit as a Magid. He was really, uh, as a Talmud. He was really a Chavad by the Baal Shemtev. Not of a den. The Magid was Mamali became coach of Baal Shemtev. At that point, Chassidus had only one Rebbe. One Nasi. So there were other Tzadikim who in their own homes had their own, their own, their own Chabura, their own Chasidis, like the Michla Zlachever also visited Mizrich. And when he came to Mizrich, he came to Mizrich to show deference to the Magid, and Shabbos to take a private Fazir. And the Magid sent the Alter Rebbe to spend the Shabbos with him. And the, it was a Mesidus Nefesh, the Alter Rebbe, to miss one Shabbos by being by his Rebbe to sit by Abzusha, the Michla, uh, Michla Zlachever. And this is many, many years later, the Michla paid him back. You do a Sipur. So the Pinchas Karatzer also came to, to Mizrich to show the Balabos Mokhsidus is the Magid, but they were not exactly under him. 
And you understand in those days it wasn't like today where you have plumbing and you have all kinds of systems. They had literally Kipshute an outhouse. So understandably that the place of COVID was as far away from the base Hamaike that it could possibly be, the way it's described in the Gemara and yeah, in the Mishnah and the Rambam, the base Hamaike was under the ground, far away. Why was it far away? Because they didn't want it to be close. Because if it was close, it wasn't so pleasant, you understand? So he went to the outhouse and he found the page of Chsidus, Valgrazach. So he picked it up and he was mocked with the pit of courage. He said, Bam Rebbe, Bam Bar Shem Tev, such a thing wouldn't happen. In other words, the Bar Shem Tev would have been Reyes Hanelad, not to teach Hasidus to a kind of a person that would allow this to end up in the Chatzar. It says, in, this, this story is told by the Friedrich Rebbe in many places. And one of the Rishim is from here, from Tavshem Zayin, Tavshem Bav, the Friedrich Rebbe says that the Magid suddenly felt a darkness, a heaviness come over him. The Pinchas Karatzer walked into the Beis Medrash, holding the paper in his hand. He walked over to the Kiel. He didn't have plumbing. It was just a pot and a pot, you know, clean water and dirty water. And he, hung, he took a kvart, gavash the hand, the whole time he's holding the piece of paper, this, this blood. The Alter Rebbe saw the Pinchas Karatzer walk in. Alter Rebbe was, was the Alter Rebbe. He was a smart guy. And he understood exactly what was going on. So he got up, and he walked over to the Pinchas Karatzer, and either the Alter Rebbe told the story very quickly, or the Pinchas Karatzer's Ashayatzer took a long time. And he told him the whole story with the Evan Teish of Kesed that we know. Which the Fidik Rebbe in other places tells Baruch Gedela about a prince who got sick, and they couldn't find the cure, and the valley was getting sicker and sicker, until they discovered that it's the base, it's the Evan HaYesheid of the Kesed HaMelech. And it's not like in England that every king, king makes a new crown and then they put him away in the storage house. Kind of ice. There's one crown. The Chazal say, Keset el Mosad, there's one crown. David HaMelech with that crown and Shleim HaMelech with that crown and so on and so forth. And Fakir, the Chazal say, the way they determine who the next king is, if the crown fit, that was a riot that he's the next Melech. And they broke it. Allah sex fake it. If the child is going to survive, I'm about to eat it. And they took out the stone and they ground it up into a powder and they fed it to the child. And most of it was wasted. He was not able to consume it. But a, a few drops. So al finished the story and that's how it's written in this Rishim. <laughs> and the Pinchas Kodesh has said, Reifei Kolbos Ramafilasis. The Magid is sitting by Zich and Simir and the, the darkness lifts. The cloud of heaviness that had come over him lifted. And he told the Rebbe, the Alter Rebbe later on, Alle Joren von Heinten weiter as a dank dich. the Mesitian Magid told Alter all the years I live going forward, I owe to you. Alle Joren von Heinten weiter as a dank dich. He told him the story. What's the Teichen Asipur? Chasidis is not revealed to us because we're more worthy. Chasidis is revealed to us because we're less worthy. So why is it being revealed? Because what's the point if you have books, you put them in a closet? Once the start of it, blood garnished, you know. The Rebbe used to speak to all the G'dayli Yisrael about printing the Torah of their Zedes, Sayyid Echsidesh, Sayyid Litvish. And as a matter of course, they would say, Be ins fit me zich nisht azoi. And the Rebbe said, and you're going to continue with, Be ins fit zich nisht azoi. It's going to end up in landfill. You're going to have an Einakul who's going to think this is good for firewood. If you're not going to print it now, <laughs> in Ruslan, in Poland, in Kimamas Tabahalten, a oitzer. In America, you're gonna hold the ksav, your son is not gonna know what to do with it. He's gonna put it in the garbage. He's gonna use it for lots of pizza and chusay. So the Abish there brought the Mashantav into the world. And the Mashantav with Gala Teres Achsidis, with all the yarn that we know about Teres Achsidis. Why? Because it's Kipshute Mamish Ayin from Pekoch Nefesh. The survival of the Jewish people depends on the union of, of Er Teres Achsidis. Now, of course, it goes without saying. That when you talk about chsidis, it's a koyach leki. In other words, nobody can explain what chsidis is. Nobody can explain how chsidis works. You know, I, I read many, many years ago, Mendel, oh, Shalom, Mendel Feldman from Baltimore was interviewed by the Kfar Chabad. It goes back 35 years, Mr. Amir. And they asked him at that time, how are you makarav ayit to the Tere Mitzvahs? He says, it's very simple. The one word answer, Tanya. You sit down with Ayit and you learn Tanya. You should know, if you hear the stories of people's 
fear of the Tanya. It's hysterical. So now the Zaitan, they're afraid of the Tanya like it's a disease. What's up, Zaymoyre? Because it works. I have a student, she's a shlucha today, who sits in Shulam, listens to the Balakriya read, and she has conniptions. Because she can read better than them, you understand? She was a conservative rabbinate, and she can lean in. She prepared all the boys and the girls for their aliyahs. So when she was becoming from, how did she become from Shvera Shliach? And he started learning Tanya with her. And she was taken by the Tanya. They, it was a conservative shul, a of temple. Asak Gelt and nobody ever comes to the shul, it's always neat and clean. It was a huge library. The, the rabbi had thousands of books that he bought. The shul paid for it, no one even opened these books. So she walks in, <laughs> and she's looking around. A massive library, Halavai Al-Tayda, who was library, you understand? al would actually use it. By him, it sat on the shelf, and it looked very nice. So he says to her, he calls her by a Goyish name, I forgot what it was. Hey, what are you looking for? <laughs> so she tells him, I'm looking for our copy of the Tanya. A conservative rabbi. He turns white and says, that's a bad book. <laughs> you shouldn't read it. And if you're reading it, you should stop. <laughs> What's wrong with the book? What's wrong with the book? Zoya, she could read, yeah. Uh, Sefer Abor, she could read. Eitz Chaim, she could read. The Tanya is a bad book. Why? What's wrong with the book? A guy told me, he was learning at Tzolna Yeshiva, and his father was a supporter of the Yeshiva. They ca caught him learning Tanya, and they kicked him out of the Yeshiva. So his father said, Vosad Avla, he says, I got to talk about the Red in the Medrash. I got to talk about the Red in the You could see from how much people fear the Tanya, the Koyach of the Tanya. Well, you think it's, uh, of course it's the Inyonim of the Tanya. Chsidis al what it's called, Er Atzmi, Er Abba, whatever oasis you want to use. When a person tastes chsidis, and of course the way the Rebbe Kedake ba Koydish nemtes fanander, it's the mayon, and the mayon alein kumten chutzo, and the mayon is metayr be mashahu, and the mayon is metayr be zeichalid, and so on and so forth, as long as it's connected to the mocker. No one is saying that you give a hezbir why chsidis gets into a Yiddish and a shom and it wakes it up. But when you look at chsidis, in other words, in the oasis, was mekem fashtein. What do you see? What do you see? What do you see? That the Baal Shem Tev came into the world. When you, if you had lived in the time of the Baal Shem Tev, you could not have understand the need for the Baal Shem Tev. For sure, if you lived in times of the Alter Rebbe, and you have to remember, the Baal Shem Tev lived in, in Padolia, he lived in, in, in Ukraine, we do a pogromen. But the Alter Rebbe lived in Lite. Alter Rebbe lived in Lite. There were no pogroms in Lite. Yidin had been living for hundreds of years, the biggest yeshivas, the greatest go'ayinim, the biggest b'nei teira were in Lita. And the Friedrich Heber writes in all of his rishimis, the way they were miyakir and mechabev tamidich achomim, and tamidibar, yeshiva bacharim, was unbelievable the way the litvish were miyakir teira. The Friedrich Heber writes about this, no apologies. They needed chassidus. The gross talmidim needed chassidus. Besides the fact that they were miyakir teira, they were pushing grace and mekubalim. The big book of Today's Masnag the Machal, they know what Kabbalah is. They don't consider it a part of Tayra, whether they say so or not. But uh, if you lived then, how, who needed Chasidis? But if you go forward 200 years, you understand that the Baal Shem Tev had not been where the Baal Shem Tev was. And the Al-Tarebbe had not been where the Al-Tarebbe wasn't. We wouldn't be sitting here right now. We would not be sitting here. Lakewood wouldn't be Lakewood Era Kaidish. It wouldn't exist. It would push it, would not be. And again, when you look at chesidus, and you, uh, you're not allowed to forget the inyanatsmi. In other words, the idea that it's, it's uh, forgive me for words, it's magic. Chesidus touches an ashama, not because you understand the psychology of it, or the philosophy of it, because it's a lakus, fun of from Friedrich and Rebbe, that's a famous story. I tell it all the time, that the, it's, it's a harich as but the nakud is that they, they found the gnizah. In Tafesh Ha'inchas, they found the gnizah, the gnizah chesonis. And they brought it to the Rebbe Rashab. Shmuel Begra was a great Sikvir. He spent a lot of money. And he bought a whole Kemat Aganse collection with hundreds of letters. And he brought it to the Rebbe Rashab in Lubavitch. The Rashab, Rebbe Rashab went through the letters and he made two piles. He says, these are authentic and these are in it. That's a kosher, that's nit kosher. Now, my only hashara is, I don't think that they forged letters. Some of the letters, the letters were copied in haste. There's a whole history of the letters. The letters were copied in haste. Some of the letters were copied in such haste that the Pashat were not, they were just, they were not the original at all. Upon him. So they, they brought the letters to the Rebbe Rashab. He made two piles. 
These are authentic, they don't understand. If you, if you know the history of Hasidus, as it's known by us in Labavitch, in Chabad, the Fidi Kedabit's version, and you know the history of Hasidus told by other Hasidim, the Gniza corroborates our version of history and it discredits others. It's, uh, there's a lot of sensitive politics. Politics is by definition not sensitive, but there's a lot of sensitive politics about the Gniza. The Rebbe writes in a letter that the Munkacher, who was so close to the Rabbeim, was fired on Keg and the Gniza. But when the Rebbe, the Rebbe wrote to somebody, he says, then the Gniza you have Shemis, and you have Seydis Atere, Sichas Chul, Sichas Eifes, one. He says, I saw them, you didn't see him. You can't forge that, you can't make that up. A Yidus Shaitanish and Seydis Atere, there's Nyonim in these, in these letters, which were not in the Tparsim, that push it Seydis Atere, you couldn't possibly bluff. Anyway, so after they did this, they took the whole pile of letters, they mixed them back up, and they brought them to the Fidi Kerem. The Fidi Kerem of during the time of his father, was more of a nister than the Rebbe was during the time of the Fidi Kerem. The Fidi Kerem may believe he's an Amor, it's a businessman, and Fashtetin Gishef, and Handler right. Okay, he's a tough manal, he gives, on, he gives a knas, he's an action, he's not afraid of you, you can just break into the kitchen, he'll break into your head, you know. But uh, the Rebbe said, Azeba Halton. So they brought the Fidi Kerem, this whole collection, he took it, and he made exactly the same chaluk. Exactly the same, it's hundreds of letters, exactly the same. So when he was finished, they said to Fidi Kerebe, the show is over. This is often the Ruach HaKadosh, because we already showed them to your father, and your father made exactly the same division, and now you can't say, a businessman second class, like he called himself. So he goes, no, it's the Shkab Moifes. Now then, Ayid is Getlechkeit. A chefse shak douche is get lechkeit. Get lechkeit. So get lechkeit tzitzach. A Jew is a lekus. A, a, a chefetz of kedusha is also a lekus. And there's a magnetism, like you have in the Mishnah in Brachas, about the. Uh, no? No? If, when he davens, im daiti, eibs davens are good. No? What's his name? So the Rebbe said, I picked up a piece of paper. It, I had a kinship. I felt like the, the paper had the shaykh to me, and it was Kedusha. Now, if I pick up those letters, I don't think it would work so good, you know what I'm saying? But that was his excuse. Yeah, Chassidus Alakus. And Chassidus touches the need to sell the key in every person. And that's the real truth. But the, 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 the presentation, the goof. The means by which it's able to be digested, to be nimshach and apnimius, is the Baal Shem Tev spoke about neshama, and the Baal Shem Tev spoke about the lukus, and the Baal Shem Tev spoke about amuna to every person. And I'm not going to be mighty in this, but the kids said I want to say it. Yeah, you go back 800 years, 900 years, a thousand years. Yidden who lived in Europe had no problems. Yidin lived in Europe with no problems. Why? Because the Goyim who lived in Europe were prostate, they were walking around barefoot and they were dirty and they were diseased, yeah? But if Yidin lived in Asia, if you lived in, 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 in the Muslim world, it was very cultured and it was very rich and uh, everybody was busy with philosophy, a lot of Yidin, the Ramah says, Nitpal Sefu, they became entangled, they became Nevuchim from this Chochmas, they started learning all these philosophies. When they said, Fadrei up, they made them crazy. So what did the G'deli Yisrael do? They also came out with a Akhtedes Asame Marpe for these Nisyenes. And the solution was Chkire El Kis, right? Philosophy, Seicho of Kedusha that answers the Seicho to Leo Mazer. That's what it was. The Basham Tev wrote, the Ramam wrote a Seifen, the Sag wrote a Seifen, and Huda Levi wrote a Seifen. It's form of Chakira to answer, to help Yidin strengthen them. If you got caught up in the Ramban calls, you and you got entangled. So the Bashem the Rambam wrote a sefer to help you deal with it. The Bashem didn't write a philosophia. Bashem didn't come up with a philosophy, a, a, another approach in Seichel, you know, like some Gedeli Yisrael in the last couple hundred years wrote books, Klaimesh, that they're gonna explain the MS of Teda and the Mitzvah Teda based on Chachmas Chitanius. There's a whole school of thought of people today who by them it's the biggest simcha if there's something that they find amongst the mitzvahs ha-teda v'shtimt mit chokh m'schitzenius. The Basham didn't do that at all. 
Hashem Tov lived 300 years ago. And the Hashem Tov didn't write what he wrote or say what he said for then. He said it for now. Even the Alter Rebbe, even though the Alter Rebbe says, I mean, Tifa Derech, the Alter Rebbe's Chasidus was for us. For us! Because the Pekuach Nefesh, the dying child, if in the times that the Baal Shem Tev, there was a matzah of his halfos, today this halfos is a thousand times as much. Mamish, a thousand times as much. And when the Baal Shem Tev and the Alter Rebbe gave us Chasidus, and they packaged it, they packaged it, that you should be able to put it into your mouth and to chew it and to swallow it and to digest it so that you become one with the Hasidus that you're learning, what did they give us? They gave us a derech achayim, they gave us a toiro that's based on a muna toiro. The Baal Shem Tev did not come up with a derech that explains things like Pisechel. And it's a terrible mistake. It's a Pashat Amaratzis, it's nishrichtik to say that the Alter Rebbe gave us a, a chkideh, a, a philosophy to answer questions and to prove things. Whenever I get into these conversations, people I ask my students, show me one place in all of Chassidus Chabad, all of Chassidus Chabad from seven Abayim, where they prove anything. That the Abish did exist, that Tehidim and Hashemayim, that Tehidim and Hashemayim, you're not gonna find any place in Chassidus a proof for anything. That Abayim did not, did not, Provide us with a chakira, with a philosophy. They gave us a chassidus. And what is chassidus? Chassidus is a moon and avan yire. A moon, like it says in Tanya. The Baal Shem Tev and the Alter Rebbe, each one of their own way, each one of their own generation, gave us a koi. It's the Shana Pala's words. The Kteire Same Marpe for Ale Magaifis for Ikvis of the Meshicha. How does a yid remain a yid? He zoiche to taste from the Mayon. He learns a Pedic Tanya, he learns a few shooters of Tanya, he puts on Phil Namiv Tsoyim. This is Hatzolus Nefoshis. This is the Koyach that the Baal Shem Tzim Rebbe gave. It's an Ina Laki. It's an Ina Laki, and it's very complicated. You know why it's complicated? For the same reason that so many people are afraid of the Tanya, we're afraid of our, our school becoming too crazy because you have too much Chasidus, you understand? Let's make it normal. Now, I'm, I'm the biggest advocate for normalcy, okay? But I am. I, I, but the truth is, the MS MS is, that if I had to put it in Oasis, you could trade in 100 pounds of academic aptitude for a, an ounce of pure faith. As a person, as a father, and as a teacher. The Baal Shem Tev and the Alter Rebbe Hasidis is all about God without kashes, not a God with terutzim. Those are the ganze Hasidis. Bemis, the ganze, the whole Indian of Hasidis, it's not a philosophy. It's not convincing you intellectually. It's bypassing the Seichel. Even Hasidus Chabad, which is so intellectual, but the whole Hasidus Chabad is to strengthen the Yamuna, not to prove it. Chassidus Chabad never ever proves there's a God. Never. It just tells you how to bring that God into your mind. But your relationship to that Eib Shtir. Emunah Tehira. Emunah, you show me a Maimed Al Tarebbe where there's a proof of Eib Shtir. It doesn't exist. It doesn't. The Tzemach Tzedek has notes. I have to say this. If someone has a show, I'm going to know that the Kum Bergman catches. The Tzemach Tzedek has a Sefer Achkire. The beginning of the Sefer Achkire is a Gos and the Rasag's first two. My modem. And the, the, the fact, first, my modem are proof that there's a God. So that's where it is. Yeah. So Machzadek wrote notes, but, the, but the, it, it, it's, not, it's, it's, it's an andezach. <coughs> it says in the name that Machzadek wrote those notes in anticipation of the meeting that he knew he was going to have to have in Peterburg. But the Chassidus Chabad does not, Chassidus Chabad is Chassidus. It's not Seichel. The Seichel supports and moon, it doesn't prove it. And thus is Unzer Eisek. And the truth of the matter is, honestly, for the same reason that a misnagid and a conservative rabbi, both, are afraid of Tanya. I echaba shochen, it's me detailed. Amaise. The story is printed in, in, in this, uh, there was a Yid who passed away many years ago, I don't know how many, but a long time ago. His name was Remer Blizinski. You may have descendants in the room, Remer Blizinski. The story, so they, they made a biography of his life. You could buy the book, and if it's still available, you can read about his life. Remer Blazinski lived in Varsha. And he came from a Choshev Chsidish Meshpoch, a Nishchabad, a Pelish Meshpoch. 
And in Poland, you have to say they didn't have yeshivas like in Rusland. The Divir you notice the Divir didn't want yeshivas. The Misnagdim had big yeshivas. The Divir the Tanzib, did not want yeshivas. You know what he said? Because in yeshivas, Klaim is a chalap, of course. And that's what happened in Russia. Lachnisht. The biggest brains, the Litvish yeshivas in Russia, were so good, you have no idea. You know, whatever the word, of course, the source of all the yeshivas is Valozhin. Yeah? And then all the Talmidin. I don't know, I'm not very good at this. People about Baranovich and, and Slabotke and Mir and Tells. These were incredible yeshivas. Don't kid yourself. To get into those yeshivas, you had to be a Mitsuyan Chef They had two, three hundred applicants every Zman. They took 20. They were geniuses. So if you were an Apokadis, all you had to do was end up in a yeshiva like that and you contaminated the entire Russia. Because they became the Rabonim. They became the G'deli Sol and they were Go'inim. When Taim Khatmim was established, in Russia with huge yeshivas, if you would scratch away the outer layer, they were mamish rotten. I'm not going to say 100% and I'm not going to say all the yeshivas. It was it the, the worms from Seichel were terrible. The Tzanzer says, Zol ze in the Shtiblach. So the, in the Polish Shabbach, not in the Shtiblach. The Galatian Shabbach didn't have Rashi Shivas, didn't have such a Seyed Mesudir, so they can't learn a little bit of Shabbach. Because they didn't have such Hadrach, a Chinuch. So they went to the Greuze in Poland, Greuze, Greuze in Poland. But as they went to the Seyed, went to the Shtiblach. So this is a Mabel, went to the Shtiblach, I think. Anyway, he was in a Bismedrish. It was the early 1920s, Tafresh Pei, Aleph. In, in Varsha Gelept, a Chosid was a Gehesen, a Fivish Zalmanov, Shag a Fivish Zalmanov. He was a Shmuel Zalmanov's father. There's, there's two Mishpochas. The original Zalmanovs were two, Fivish and Shmuel. And Fivish had a son, Shmuel, and Shmuel had a son, Fivish, so it gets very tricky. But there's two Mishpochas of Zalmanov. Fivish Zalmanov lived in Varsha. His son, Shmuel Zalmanov, was very close to the Rebbe, very, very close to the Rebbe. And his grandson, who was the same as Yisrael Yesu, just now passed away. If you saw in the magazine, you saw Yesu Zalmanov, this is a grandson, this is Fivish Zalmanov. So he walks into this medrash, this medrash. He was 14 years old. And Fivish Zalmanov sat down to learn what a Yitanya. He listened. This is a Mabelzinski. And it, at the beginning, it took him, because he had kashas, he had questions. And he came to his parents and he complained, and he came to his teachers and he complained. That upside Ebe, I, I, the names are known, but I forgot them. My memory doesn't work. It used to work. <laughs> so whatever I, I know, either I made it up or it's from my mulligan side. And, <laughs> and as time passes, it's more making up and less remembering. No, if you can laugh at yourself, no, you can, you'll be a bottle for a long time. Um, his, his, Rebbe, his Rebbe got him in touch with Brandwein. You know, Brandwein is this is the Machaber of the Sulem. You know, the famous Sulem on Zeir. He lived in Poland. I guess in Brandwein. His grandchildren live in Israel now. I'm a kubo. A guy has caches. A 14-year-old boy. So they brought him to this here Brandwein. I heard this from his grandson. He should answer his caches. And he wasn't happy. They didn't work for him. But the Tanya worked for him. So he wanted a long this. And his Rebbe, his mother's Rebbe, the Meshbacha, said, Bishu, my friend, can learn Kabbalah. To get Eitzes from Brandwein, he was learning Kabbalah, is a mitzvah. But to learn the Tanya, to chaz the trev. There's a whole Arich HaSasipur. He asked for to, to five years to learn with him. And they started learning, that he got together a chavre, and they made Taim Chetmimim. Taim Chetmimim in Varsha was made when the Rebbe was still in Russia. And it was ten bachar, but the mayor of Blazinski was the reason, the, the yeshiva that he made closed. When the Rebbe came, the Rebbe came, they reopened it. He was a Yitzvah Messias Nefesh. He, he got married and they got a lot of money for Naden. He took his entire dowry, entire dowry, and invested the yeshiva should stay open. And it stayed open just another year and then it closed. That must have hurt, I can't imagine how. But the end of the story was that his Rebbe, his, the Rebbe of his family, and I heard from a grandson of his, and he was a tzaddik, he a said, the touch like a kabbalah, tani chazetreif. He got sick. He got this mayor was he got sick. And his mother ran to their Rebbe and said, Mayor is near Yazunt. The former brother, a Yeshua. He says, Hob my Yeshua, Zola Zhunt and Emma Evadufan Lenin Kabul. 
you should commit to stop learning Tanya. So she, the story is printed now. She came to her son and Gebet Nerachmem, I can't afford to lose you. Say that you will not learn Chassidus. She said to his mother, he wants to think about it for two hours. He wants to think about it. She came back two hours later and he says, I'm not stopping to learn Tanya. And if I lose my life, I lose my life. And she, she knew that it was a kpeidah from a gutarid. Anyway, the end of the story was as soon as he said those words, as they say, he transferred allegiances. He went over from one to another. And he recovered. He went, gazut. He went over from one to the other. Says, and he lived. So his grandson said to me, he told me this story. He says, Achkenus nit fashtein, yene rebe, had got eine klach was eine gewen machal le shabes, eik le trefes. A betanya, it was a, it was a, it was, it, was, it was an aversion, it was a resistance, it was a hisnagdus, which was so, and still that way, it so doesn't make sense. It so doesn't make sense how people are afraid of the Tanya. And you know why they're afraid of it? Because it works and you can't explain it. If the Tanya works and you understand why, so you can decide if it's a good method, but if something works and has no hesbit, it's like voodoo, what just happened? A person learns Tanya as Neshama wakes up so you get, you get uncomfortable. People like, to be con people like to control their environment, especially if they're so smart. It's in another key. It's in another key. This is what chassidus is. So the point is, I'm a lamid. Right? This is a fabreng of malamdim. Kainor hazagrei sarelam. It's very amazing. Baruch Hashem. A malamid has kind of And I, I, I have very strong opinions about chinuch. Maybe they're wrong, maybe they're right, but they're strong. Um, I, I absolutely believe in children learning and in children working hard. I don't believe that you raise a child by singing Hasidic songs and telling him Hasidic stories and jumping up and down. They have to work and they have to learn and they have to know. A child goes to school like a father goes to work. It's not meant to be easy. It's not meant to be easy. It's, both me it's meant to be manageable. You can't expect a child to do something that he's not able to do. That's not fair. But what he could do, he must do. And he absolutely has to work. He has to write, and he has to read, and he has to listen, and he has to even think. Children are supposed to learn how to think in school. And the teachers have to make them. And you make them by work. I'm, I, this is certainly everything I just said, I believe, very firmly. But in the end, that's not how you make a yid. That's how you make a mensch. And I have love of those. I may tell us not reading, but in Chok Moschitzonius can provide the same in yid. But the chsidis, the chsidis that we invest in the children is, is a lakus. It's, it's really a lakus. And if you need to define a lakus means, it's magic. You cannot explain why and how it works. It just does. You don't understand why when you tell a story, a child, a sipar amiti, from Emes Chasidis, we defeat the Rebbe Zechreinis, or Emes Avos Yisrael, or Emes Yiras Shemayim, or Emes Emes Yiras Nefesh, Emes Tahar and Kedusha. It touches the child's not that doesn't touch the child's mind. It doesn't touch the child's imagination, as the psychologist wants you to think. It touches the child's soul. And ultimately, if I'm a Chasidish and a Lamed, and I have Talmidim who come to learn by me, I have to give them chasidus. Now, you're not giving four-year-olds Tanya. I'm not into 10-year-olds learning Tanya. I have opinions about that. I think kids in elementary school, forgive me for my kfira, should be learning Mishnayis, not Tanya. They can learn Tanya when they're 12. Kids have to be kids. That's my opinion. I know that I just started off with the whole old and whole establishment, but I'm not changing my opinion. Just don't invite me back next Chayel. I won't say it again. Kids have to learn Mishnayis, Balpeh. After no wedding in Shachan Norach, that was Mishnayit, that was Torah. But that's the Limud. When it comes to the Neshama, every age the child gets, with the Altarabi says in Tanya, Muna Yirvava. With the littlest children, it's the easiest. And as the children get older, it gets harder. Kids go through a stage where they're quite cynical. And unfortunately, that age is younger and younger. There's a Yeridas Hadoiris. A Malamid has to find a way to the neshama of his child. And I don't mean this in the psychological sense. There is a psychology also. I mean it in the sense that you're planting seeds of elokus. What does that mean? 
It's a very good question. Don't ruin the Fabregan by reality. <laughs> the most important method or tool for communicating that to the children is by being a Dugma Chaya. If you read the Friedrich Rebbe's Sichas and Hashim, we have to make a break, we'll sing a nigan and we march, but just the Friedrich Rebbe writes so much, so much about the Trefim Alamdim. It eats him up alive. When you read it today, you don't even know what he's talking about. In those days, by Yom Mahim, in America, and in, in, in a certain way it was true in Europe, and it was certainly true in Israel. You see, this is hard for you to understand, but today, what's the most important thing? Socially. To be cool. To look nice, to sound smart, to be quick, to be socially, to give them the in the Chabure. If you're a smart guy, and you, you don't know how to make a joke, you're a weirdo, you're a geek, you're a loser, you're not, nobody needs you. I mean, these guys sit in libraries and give books, they pay them five cents an hour, and the people who sell the books and wear nice ties, they make a million dollars. That's how it is. A hundred years ago, it wasn't that way. The world was into Chochmah. The world was into Chochmah. They used to call it unintelligent. Chassidim. We're spoil from an intelligent. He's edge as studiert. Agelerente. It was a terrible clipper. A terrible clipper. It's a clipper you can't even relate to because the world has changed so much. The world has changed. I don't know if you saw. It's a gewaldeke shtickle. It's such a in the piece. The Rebbe had a relationship, a personal relationship, with a bunch of conservative, I don't know what you want to call them. Somebody once wrote, Harabonim ha conservativim. The Rebbe crossed that and wrote, Harabais ha conservativim. The Rebbe had a personal relationship with the JTS, the Jewish Theological Seminary. The Rebbe used to, before he was Rebbe, he would go in there. There was a Yid Lieberman, who was a Gon. He wrote Svodim on Yerushalmi. He was a Frum Yid Bechayev Apratim. And the Rebbe had a very strong relationship with this guy Lieberman. And he, a lot of the members of the JTS had personal Kshorim with the Rebbe. And the Rebbe, the Rebbe's shita, when it came to them, I'm not saying we're allowed to do this. Conser conservative Judaism have problems with Amunah. But you say that, das. But the Rebbe had a sheet of Teichi Ochak Lipasai Dorak. He didn't throw him away. You see, by dollars, these are very famous conservative rabbis who knew the Rebbe very well. They've spent time with them. They've encouraged them. There's a famous video where a guy, one of the conservative rabbis, spoke about Tarata Mishpacha, and then the conservative movement, Paskin, that Tarata Mishpacha is Nishkan Ikir, and Sarusim from Mikvois, from there's a whole story. Anyway, a guy comes to the Rebbe by dollars. And dollars is open. He comes with his wife. He, of course, there's a lot of, there's a kid. You could see right away that this man had spent a lot of time by the Rebbe. And the kid, he's an elderly Jew. He'd been to the Rebbe in the 50s and the 60s. And the Rebbe says to him, it's not my style, even though it is the, his style, but it's not my style. It's a mission sich in Yenem Zachen. But I'm reading what's going on now in the JTS. This goes back 30 years. So you can imagine how it's today. JTS is the Jewish Theological Seminary, the biggest conservative school of Chachomim in America. And they would talk a big lumdim, I'm all. 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 So he, he tells the Rebbe, Kilu, I can't help it. I can't help him. I don't, I'm not involved. You're talking to the wrong guy. So the Rebbe says, I'm not, I wouldn't say it if it wasn't so painful. Tell him, the Rebbe says, that if he doesn't manage this, in a very short time, there's going to be nobody who will be able to understand his lectures. He says, oh, this I can tell him. They're going to become... Americane, you understand? Nobody home, you know. Then brimpezeh, have a shenet tai. I'm others day I said you make fun of anybody with little seichel. Why? Because he's weird. It was different then. So you had people, very intelligent, taka galer and temensh. Oh, but they were. They, some of them were pashat bitter because that's sores. Vechlal yidn were bitter. Yidn had bitter dimension, for good reasons. 
And some of them are gemeint as them gefashtan and the maybe the best of the maybe shnale. And he had people who could teach you diktuk and Tanakh and Talmud better than any Muhammad Nalatir. And they didn't believe in anything. They were great pedagogues. They were brilliant teachers. They knew a lot. And they can't even get good. They were good to tell. They were really skilled. And they had no emun in their heart. And it was an Esoyen. You get him a Lamed from Poland, an Altarid, the kids are going to throw spitballs. <laughs> They're going to go by him so fast, he's not even going to realize what's going on. You understand? Or you can get one of these cool guys who's going to teach these kids behavior and discipline and mental kite and ksiv, 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 whatever it is, how to read and how to write. And there's no God. And the Friedrich could have screamed about this bloody murder. You're not allowed to give your children to be the best teacher in the world. If he doesn't have a muna to hate, it's not going to go near your kids. Now, so a communicates, you asked me a question. A malamid communicates these values to his own muna, to his own ava, to his own yide. A malamid who's, who's a tomim, you know, adults are not children. Children are naturally very, very sincere. Adults, I, I really don't believe it's because they're so smart. It's because the Vietz are hardest, they have face mentioned this. It's felt that I'm not animal. It's felt that I'm animal, people. Amalamid brings into his classroom his pure faith and his pure joy of being a Yid, and he communicates this to the children. And you can't bluff. If you know the word from Fidi Kenabin, I think it was Fidi Kenabin, there was Sayyid. I think of the Fidi Kenabin, it was not the Fidi Kenabin, it was Chassidim who had daughters, had no sons. And of course, in those days, there were no Chadorim, there was no Bes Yankif, there was no Bes Rivka, there was no Bes Sora, there was none of these things. So we hired a Malamit to tutor his daughters. And the guy was a good Malamit. So after they talked Malamdis and they talked salary and all the good Zach and Gitra Mafreg and Zogmit, Bes Ayir Shamaim. So he answered, Ich bin nicht kein Yiddish Shamayim. Aber ich will sehen, dass die Kinder so ein Yiddish Shamayim. So again, I think it's about from Friedrich Rebbe, so he answered, for me, that's not enough. Ihr wollt meine Kinder, die ein neues Wachsen, und sie sollen sehen, wie er das Jenner so sein Yiddish Shamayim. Und für mich trägt das nicht. Okay, we'll make a Iberais, we'll make a Hefzik, we'll talk about it, yeah. But this, I mean, you can't yell. I'm going to go with my lamb. I'm going to go with them. 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 I'm going to go Yeah, 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 yeah
Some, uh, of course, to make a living. Uh, not terrible. A proposal. Can I know the Rube shall oilam zitznach though, but I don't know if Rube shall is going to be here in a couple of hours. So I, I like to do this because this is against the principle. Loma zogin yetz the mountain that happens nigun. What I have to wait till the six people left and it's one o'clock in the morning. Loma zogin. It doesn't mean the fabrengen is over. It just means the people are still here. Loma zogin mountain happens nigun. Yeah. So the, as the Rebbe said, gay nem de chosid, gay bring de chosid. I'm not going to have a sneak. Ma, 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 ma. 
Yeah, 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 yeah
The Rebbe calls Malamdi Malachte Malachi Shamaim. You know that, right? I'm sure you heard that. Malachte Malachi Shamaim. He taught them Abish Nazarbet. Abish is a Malamit. The Abish was the first Malamit. And he gave recess. <laughs> what was the Rai of the Abish? A good Malamit. He gave him recess. He gave him Meshad Abedi recess. How often? After every six psukim, he gave him recess. It doesn't say how long the recess was. As they state, he gave Meshad Abedi a half sick in Pasha, the Pasha. Okay, Lachai, but Meshad Abedi was a. He was a teacher's pet. During recess, instead of playing, he was chazering the shiir. Yeah. So a person who's a malamid is doing the Abish's work. You're doing the Abish as a malamid. The Abish has to teach us teda. He taught teda to Meishah Rabbeinu. Meishah Rabbeinu, 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 Okay, so I'll talk about what you asked. And I'll give you a simple way to, to, to remember it, if you will. To. The Rebbe has the Sikhe in Yon Shal Teres Achsidis. In Yonah Teres Achsidus, the Rebbe said, you kiss the Tavshin Chavav, as you know. And the Rebbe was Magia, the Rebbe worked very hard on that Sikh. Come upon him. The Sikh came out, Muga, in Tavshin Lamed Aleph. Five years after the Rebbe said the Sikh, it came out Muga. And it came out Muga for the Sefer the Erechim. And it's interesting, they were Mepharsim, and Nishlaying, in the last year or two, the minus of the Rebbe about it. That uh, when Abiel was finishing the first Ozan Gezunt Nishtak, Eich Hashem Veshonim, Tevis, Um Iris, he was, he was finishing the first Krach of the Sefer Erchim. So he wrote to the Rebbe about a Mavoy or a Psach Dov or a Psach, uh, a preface to the Sefer Erchim. I don't know if you guys know, but I have in my Nish Gedrikte a long. Hagadoma that Rabbi El can't prepare for the Sefer Erech, and it didn't go in. I don't know if it was, it was vetoed mitzad das tachten or mitzad. I said, "Fran, we can't skirigin." If if you know the right people, today everything is so easy. One guy with a computer, <laughs> and everybody has all the gigam with it. But we were bachin, and we used to collect these things. Koyvit yad al yad. There was no. We had to make copies of everything. So you had to steal the copy machine. <laughs> it was a whole situation. But the Rabbi El wrote a whole long. Mavoy to the Sefer Echem, which he did not include. And upon him, he wrote to the Rebbe that the Rebbe should give something. So the Rebbe wrote back to him, Yimtza Sasiche de Meidani. The Rebbe calls the Sikhe in Yerel, the Sikhe is the Sikhe of Meidani. That's how the Rebbe labeled it. Because the Rubai of the Sikhe was the Meidani. If you're familiar with the Sikhe, Meidani. 
Anyway, but the Sikha starts. The first Sif of the Sikha really has everything that the Sikha is going to talk about is in the first Pedic. The Rebbe starts off saying, if, if, if you know the Sikha in Yonah Shotel Sachsidis, yeah? The Rebbe starts, you can hear me, right? You can hear me, yeah? Um, the Rebbe starts off by saying that the uh, Benigayat to what's in Yonah Shatayda Chasidus Nemru Dvarim Rabbi. There's a lot of different pshatim of what Chasidus is, and the Rebbe brings four. All of Beis Gimel Dalid. The first is right from Ksav Yad Dach Loi Neidalami. Right, we grew up with Ksav Yad Dach Loi Neidalami. Many many years it was called Ksav Yad Dach Loi Neidalami. Now it's printed in Sefer Amemorim Tov Reish Samach Gimel as a mimer from the Rebbe Nishma Seidin. Chogehet mentions Zog Nebshenisht, but it's printed as a mime from the Rebbe Rashab, Yechide is Gula, Yutis Kisa, Tafir Shlamach Gimel. It's printed. But for years and years and years, it was called Ksav Yadach. The Rebbe had a Ksav Yadach, Lei Nei He doesn't know who it came from. And in the Ksav Yadach, Lei Nei it says that the Baal Shem Tev came into this world, I think it's the name of the Pichas Koritzer, to be me'ere yid from me'esalfus, to wake people up from a condition of faint. And as we know, the, the word which the Rebbe said, that the Baal Shem Tev's name was actually Yisroel, because he was koire at the Arois Gerofen by Yedin Yidin, every Yid's name is Yisroel, and the Neshama of the Baal Shem Tev was a call to the to be made of the Neshama of Yisroel. Right, so the first union of Hasidus is uh, to wake people up from Yisrofos. And you have to understand, it's, it's Peseidim and Suder, it's not Stam as a four things, it's a Seder. The second thing is, what the Gemara says, Chosid Serfan. The Chosid is Lefnimi Shura Sadin. Poshit Frum. Frum. Oiz Gihit. What's a Chosid Lefnimi Shura Sadin? Segevena Yid Vasad Gehesen. Bitte Gehesen. The Pchaim Ezer. Pchaim Ezer was the Rav of Vilna. Pchaim Ezer passed away. Tishabov Tov Shin. Right before the war started. Pchaim Ezer. No, the year. No, the war starts at the A year after the war started, he was the Rav in Abez Navilna. A part of him was a big gun. What do I know about goyness? I can't talk Lenin. He was a big Talmud Chacham, big gun, and he had a whole Bezdin. The Chaim Ezer loved Chassidim. He was a Misnagid. He was an Emes Misnagid, but he loved Chassidim. You know why? Because they were from. Chaim Ezer couldn't take the, the Misnagdish Kalos Reish. Today's Misnagdim are not Misnagdim. <laughs> Sadoa Sefer, I'm the master of digression. I make a living by changing the subject. But if, if you think I'm good at it, you'll hear Mendel Fabreng, Mendel Futafas. You sit a whole night and wait for him to go back to the story that he started five hours before, he never goes back. I, I try to make full circle. Sadoa Sefer was haste, Tera Samus. It was printed eight years ago, Tov Shin Ayim Beis. Because it was the hundredth anniversary of the Yeshiva's Tera Semes at the Rebbe Rashabas Meyasad in Hebron. So the Menah Hanhala made a Sefer called Tera Semes. It's a boring book. And books on book of schools are boring. But, there's 200 pages, I think, on Labalter Samchavich. Labalter was a, was a gem. His life was Kula Yisurim. He died at, he died at 45, I think. Meduka be Yisurim. You have no idea what meant Ashver and Lebem. It's not fair. You're talking about not fair, that wasn't fair. He was such a big chosset, he was such a big mukhus. He also had a great cup. He was also a moid in the cup. He printed now his Rishim Santanya. He had a clear, deep mind. A gruntike, tifa cup. He wasn't a balregish. He was a mighty nigga balregish. If a tinkin mashke till the till the ocean was dry, but he was a gvaldik. He was a big chosid. The Baltas Mechavich, and they immortalized him. Baltas Mechavich had three daughters. He had no sons, and then his children were raised orphans. His wife died in 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 Pevav, I think. Left three klein amon yisemim lach mamish babies. He raised them himself. He was always sick. I don't think any of his daughters were from. He had only Tzadus about it. But they, they immortalized him. And that's why you have to buy the Sefer. Because Rebalt Tzadus is, was, in, in a golden age, he was golden. Rebalt Tzadus. But, uh, he, he traveled back and forth from Israel to Poland. The Fidelik ever wanted to be in Poland. He was in Madrech de Bochrim. 
but he had he had tuberculosis. He had terrible problems with his lungs. He needed to be in a warm climate. So he would come to Pilum, then he got sick with that to throw, got better, went back to Pilum. I got claimed the kind of him. It's he had a right to complain, and he didn't. And we found out Navart. Forgive, it's gonna upset a lot of you, but I don't care. <laughs> uh, um, somebody once said to Rabal Tesemchovich, "Eine von de Prushim de Misnagdim." In that you saw in Yerushalayim, there's Prushim. They're the they're the leftovers in the Vilna gone. They went at the soul 200 years ago. They're still there. They wish Traimlach, Payas, full beards, and they're Misnagdim till the Nikuda. They have on their wall no pictures. Chas v'shalom. The only picture they have is Rachman al Islam, the Chayim, that hangs on their wall. From till the end. <laughs> so somebody once said to Rabbi Alter, "This gate's like The story happened at least. He's gone 80 years. He passed away tzaddik tes. So someone said to Rabbi Alter, "Mechavich, ain't from the Prussian from the Misnagdim." So Rabbi Alter just Alter snapped back, and I want you to hear this. I'm talking to you because he asked the question. Yeah? I want to have wissen. The Baltic said, does it misnag them? Ich weiß, was am misnag it is. He said, it was in Poland, he said. They were kalsche bekalim, megat, metairs, ashers bekant taimim. He said, doesn't it misnag them, does it tzaddikim? Misnag them today are very from, they're beemis el chidin. They have this, they have this aversion to the Rebbe and to Mashiach which is Bambish not to be understood, just like that, it's totally irrational, just that aversion to the Tanya, but they're Er L'chayidim. Misnagdim in the old country, were big lomdim, and Kerecha Dateira Odif, or was Gesser the Lamdim, not Mer Kerecha Dateira, Reb Chaim Ezer couldn't stand it. He was a Litvi Sherid, and he was surrounded by big Bnei Teira, Be'emes Kreishat Lamid Chachomim, and by today's standards, you would call them Reish, Kol Bnei Agayla. And every Kul, and every Het Teram Zikikent, and the Gepaskan Tazay. Chaim couldn't take it. Chaim Ezel loved to see them push it because they were Elach. They're not looking for Kulis. And there's the famous word that happened with him, with the Chaim Ezel. That the Misnag, the Agon of his Chev of Ms. Bezdin, a great time with Chachem, came across the letter from the Rebbe Rashab about the Shoshana Ladach. We say, he just kissed the word of Tazayin, kissed the Shamach Beis. And he laughed. And the Mishnah says, I bought a Shoshanim. And the Chassid don't have a fifth Rosh Hashanah. So Reza didn't laugh. And he said, Bazei kum tzu, and ba'un zahit al tarabkin. The Chassid are adding, or always diminishing. And I want to tell you a story which you're not going to like, but it's true, and you have to hear it. <laughs> and there was a Labav Shayid in a bungalow colony or in a camp. And one of Rabbi Ashabes Talmidim, not Rabbi Ashabes, one of Rabbi Ashabes Talmidim, I miss a Talmidim, was teaching with Elul. Rabbi Shabbat used to teach his Talmidim in Elo Lukut Tatera. And he used to say, if not for Lukut Tatera, Rosh Hashanah has no meaning. He taught the Lord. So Labavit Yungaman is watching a Litvisher, a modern Litvisher, yeah? a Talmud of Rabbi Shabbat, teaching Lukut Tatera. And he was giving a shir. And he could have a, a Maggit shir, but he was a the fire. And the Raiden did, because they made a dab, and they said, Tanya Peirik Lev. This is a Misnagid. And he was so surprised to hear that a Misnagid should write Tanya Pedek Lev, he wrote it into the Rebbe. That he was in a camp, and he saw one of them, not Rabbi Ashabed himself, Ashabed Atmanisht. He had a real love, Rabbi Ashabed also had a real love for Chassidim. And for the same reason, for the same reason, he, he knew what he was missing because he was not raised a Chassid. And he understood for his students how important it is. He used to say, you took my mind and you didn't take my heart. But it bothered him. So he wrote into the Rebbe that he saw a Talmud that was teaching Chassidus. Okay, didn't put it. But Tanya paid the left, that's not the jargon, that's the Chunzer, Tereshe Balpeh. So the Rebbe wrote, Kemaimer, Bazei Vuchulu, Umba Unz Vuchulu, Vechein Lehepach. Lehepach. He quoted this word from Abchai Mezer. Bazei Vuchulu, Umba Unz Vuchulu, by them it's adding, by others diminishing. Vechein Lehepach. It's a, it's a word from Hechocha. That's what I wrote. V'chein l'heipach. So the second, getting back to the point, yeah, the second thing that's written on the first sif of in Yodosh, or Teres HaChassid, is that the Yifachassid is chos t'seif, on the Fnimi Shodosh Sadin, yeah? What's the third thing? Midas Tevis. Right? Midas Tevis. The two Madregis. The lower Madregis is the Shanes Midas of Ativim. 
that you change your teva. If your teva is chesed, you do gvura. If your teva is gvura, you do chesed. And the higher madrig is lishan is teva midaisev. So if your teva is chesed, you do chesed, but not based on the teva, outside the teva, beyond the teva. If your teva is gvura, you do teva. You know, you, 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 you should use it, but it shouldn't be limited to Teva. And the fourth is Moyach. That what? That the Seich of Nevesha Sichlis and even the Seich of Nevesha Bahamis should be able to understand the Lakus in Hasoga Pnimis. Those are four points. Four points. And they're in order. Right? The first one speaks to what you and I would call a Yid. That's Rachik, not Frum or. In a matzav of you know, in our culture we call it OTD, nevach, a rab from veg, nicht zufrieden. The second one is poshet frum. And the third is bir amidis. People don't know it, but one of the nyanim of chasidis, don't tell it to anybody, is midis tevis. <laughs> you would not know. But one of the nyanim of chasidis poshet being a nice person. What's such midis tevis? If my teva is, if my teva is, a rain zog nyanim, it's a natur, it's a nature. Right? And by me, it does be a rush. I'm excused. I can insult you as much as I want. My elders ate had a big mouth. <laughs> my elders was a big chassid and a lot of Abbas Yisrael, but that we forgot. Uh, yeah. Or if a person has a teva, whatever teva it is, a mother shechede, doesn't trust people. One of the inyanim of chassidis is to overcome your midas tivim. Like it says in the Maimon, Padre Vashom, to make the midas alakim. My personality, God made me with a certain personality and a certain nature. There's parts of it which are toiv, and there are parts of it which are ra. The ra I have to be mesach legadish kol mida ro maguna, and even the toiv I have to take the tivius out of it. And the fourth thing is poshef hashten get lechayt. So you say, so how do we do it? How do we do it? It depends on the child. Four, four drachim. I mean, children, you don't have that many choices. The fourth one, L'chayr, is not shaykh as the children. The third one, it would be nice. It would be nice if we talked about Midas Tevis. See, in America, if you have Midas Tevis, it was the, 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 the good finished last. If in America, you have Midas Tevis, so you're going to be a loser. Why? If you have Midas Achzorius, and you insult people, and you put people down, you stand on people's heads, you get ahead. This is the meaning of Mokka. But uh, if, you, if you want tools, you ask me a question. To how do I communicate to my children, to my Talmidim, to my own children, to myself, the idea that Hasidus has a, an akuda which is deeper than the mind, that's straight to the neshama, that connects me to the Ebishter naturally. So depending on the child, some children you have to push it, wake them up. And if you have to wake them up, you have to use the Baal methods. How did Hashem to wake the people up? He didn't run around and scream to them, behemis. He didn't run around and tell them that they're terrible. He went around and he told them, like we tell all of our kids today, based on the psychotherapy, that Yibish to love you, and that you're very special, and that you're very important. And the this is one of the Hashem's matbeis amalchas. Hashem said it like that. He didn't say it once. Rachamon liba boy. Right? It's very hard for a kid in your class who can't learn so good and doesn't know how to read so well and you tell them that Ebi loves you because you're trying so hard it, it, it's true but it's very difficult for kids to, to find that as a nichumin as a nechoma but it's emis it's emis if you have children who are in a state of his alphas so you have to reach them the way the Baal Shem to reach children who are in the mind of his alphas you know the stories the stories are the stories are that they were magidim. They were magidim. They were preachers who made a panos of doing what I do. He asked me before if I'm being paid. Yeah. <laughs> made it. Can every song say, Oh, the magid. He ruined my whole show. Oh, the magid. Whenever he saw me, he made sure to bring me down to size. They were magidim. They made a living. <laughs> Every time I saw, oh, I came in the middle of a drush. All the people, oh, the maggot. That was the party was over. That was it. The spiel is Eisgespiel. But it was good. It was good. I wish I made it. You come and tell me again. Oh, the maggot. Anyway, the maggot made a living giving drushes. 
And the more tissues that they use, the more tears that they drop, the more they paid you. In other words, the more you made them feel like garbage, the more money you got. Thank you very much for making them feel like garbage. Think about it. This is European Jews. Americans don't like that, but that's even not the name. Anyway, so the good Magidim had full-time jobs. The best ones had full-time jobs. In Vilna, in Slutsk, in Minsk, in Pinsk, in Chvez Vushkov. The second category of Magidim had, the, had a circuit. There were five, six towns, and they would take turns every Shabbos to tell people how terrible they are in a different town. <laughs> couldn't do it every week. Ah, uh, they, they, couldn't, couldn't they, 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 they couldn't afford it. It was too expensive. <laughs> so he went to tie it. The third class of Magidim, Claude didn't have a job. So they had credentials. They had like the guys who schnutted in 770, these rabbis who say this guy is legitimate. The Shals, who's the rabbi? Well, the rabbi is legitimate, but he has a picture with a rabbi with a chasim, with a temple, from them shtot, from yanim shtot. So they had these Magidim, had credentials, had papers, that so and so gizok, that there's a kosher to read, and a magid. And they would travel from place to place where they, they didn't even have a circuit, we didn't even have a cycle. In other words, communities that could not afford a Maggid McLeod. And once a year, they got together a few cents, the Maggid came and told them how terrible they were, they all cried and they fainted and they paid him. Thank you very much. So when you read it, there's a you read about this. So the Maggid Medazoi, in Lite, Yidin, Yidin hadn't suffered. In Lite, White Russia, the northern part of Europe, they hadn't suffered. The Chmelenitsky didn't reach there. So there were hundreds of years of uninterrupted Tayyid and Aved. So the Magidim used to come and scream, fire and brimstone. It was, I mean, they were Kalim for it. They were the Fiyarech. When they went to Poland, when they went to Galicia, and they went to where the Baal Shem Tev was, the Jews were broken, you have no idea. They thought of themselves worse than dust. <coughs> and then these Magidim would come and make them feel worse than they already felt. Mamish mevat And the way it's described is, when the Magid was like really into his drasha, he would say that if the Yidin don't do tshuva, and what's the Bashan the tshuva? To derecher for tamidei chachamim, and to mechabed bnei teira, is going to come back. It's like saying Hitler to a survivor. People would push and have heart attacks. Mamish, people would have, who is gefelech? So the Baal Shem to send around his chevre <laughs> to, to balance out these Magid. A Magid comes to town, he has his credentials. I don't know if you've ever seen a Magid. A Yid came fetch himself in Shalayim. He came in Yeshiva to give a drasha. And I remember him saying, Sagimonim Broch is Dachzach. And we were all joking how the Dachzach was Eingechazer. The Dachzach was also part of the. He said Dachzach in every shul that he went into. The Zalba Dachzach. Everything was choreographed. No, it was good. It was very, very good. But it was so practiced. And you look, Musa came to Erechon Chabad in Los Angeles. <laughs> anyway. So, they would come into these shuls, push at the yidin, the gun as you can, the good to the salaf, and scream at them, scream at them. So you have a tzadik nested, who's been sleeping on the bench for two weeks. Nobody knows what he eats and where he sleeps. Get to the that's a vek. And this guy is in the middle of his speech, and he's he's so inspired, he's almost convincing himself that what he's saying is taka emes. This old man says, "Dachs mes shteit and the so the guy would stop. And by the time it was over, the guy had to run for his life. And the people found out for the first time in their life that they're not, David they doesn't hate them, and they're not so terrible. This was one of the things that the Baal Shem Tov did as an Easter. And his Talmidim did as an Easter. This is one of the things we do for our students. This is one of the things we do for our students. We live in an age, I mean, I, I, uh, I got into trouble with a very big chosset. He's probably, he's probably never gonna forget that I'm a noisvarf, as long as he lives, um, which I'm not comfortable with, but I'm not gonna tell you his name. I met him in Russia. And I was not traveling with, with, with a group like this. It, was, it wasn't considered Shingalite. It was Balabat Shingalite. And uh, we, we had Vikuchim. You travel, you spend four or five days together. You have so much time to... So one of the issues that came up was the Maime Margile Tofresh Tofshin Memvov. You know about the Maime Margile Tofshin Memvov? You know about the Maime? You heard about it. The Rebbe says only Simcha and 
betachet v'jain gut. No, the Rebbe says, don't even give tztoke. Just betachet v'jain gut. So I'm going to tell you a story about this Maimah Margil. I'll tell you a story. The Maimah was said, Shabbos Pashis Vayishlach, Tezayin or Yudayin Kislev, Tov Shim Mimbov. This was Vayihibi Meha Fax. This is a long time ago. The fax was such a gilui. The Rebbe said, Asiche, and within 50 minutes it was shipped. It was, it was amazing. The fax, I mean, today, you faxes, they're worth their weight in gold. It's a collector's item. I mean, fax lasted about two minutes with, from, from the snail mail until the internet was mamish apor yor but se given tkufas a fax tkufas a fax so we used to get the faxes this is a story I'll never forget as long as I live and I would imagine that anybody who was there du Mustafa Talmud from the Rosh Hashiva you'll see the story it's Kvaldik the whole Anash came to the Yeshiva Earl Chana Chabad Vitas Kislev Vitas Kislev was a few days after Vayishlach and there was a frame dimension the shul was packed. The shul was mamish full. I mean, it was very full. I don't know if you know Rabbi Shochet. Rabbi Shochet is a, a very thorough man. He's so thorough, he makes you nervous. Every sikhah, every maimah that came from the Rebbe, he would learn and learn and learn and learn and learn. How many of you learn it? We all know he was a smart guy, but he would sit and sit and sit and sit. So this, uh, the Rebbe, in a week, he got from the Rebbe so much tzchayre. The maimah is built in muga, short little maimah. Anyway, the Maimed is, three quarters of the Maimed is this whole thing about how today there's no Bechias and there's no, there's no Bechias, there's no Tilim, there's no Tzedakah. Imagine. Uh, 